Hello and welcome back to the Love Launch Podcast. I'm Joey Chandler, and this is where I talk to experts and everyday people about what love means to them and how we all can have more of it in the world. And today, uh, today is one of the great days because you get to I get to re-meet with two of my good friends, two people I admire deeply for all the work that they have, they just do in the world and for the men they are. Charles Suwa Singh and Daniel Holly. We 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 did a podcast, a live called the Purpose Roundtable for I don't know a couple of years, a year and a half, something like that. Uh, pre-COVID, and we haven't talked in a while. We've had a lot of changes, and so when I started talking to people about love, I said, "Okay, guys, please come on," and they're gracious enough to come. Fellas, welcome back. Nice to be. Thanks back. for having us. It's great <laughs> to be here, man. Really good to be here. Yeah, so nice. why don't we just do a little just quick introductions for the people that have not been blessed by the, the Purpose Roundtable, the one or two people left in the world who had not seen our... <laughs> <laughs> the, the few that have not seen us before. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, Charles, go for it, man. Take it away. All right. <laughs> um, I'm Charles Suisting. I'm calling from Toronto. I'm uh, an executive and life coach. Um, and my latest project is working on a group for men of color, um, where they can in community heal, grow and evolve as men, um, whether they're sons, fathers, elders in our community. Um, so that's my latest project. Uh, it's beautiful. And I love seeing that. It's been great. Thank you. Yep. Mr. That Daniel. Yeah. Oh gosh. So, I mean, my, my expertise have been in, uh, primarily social cohesion work. And I've been consulting mostly with educational institutions here in the UK. For those of you out there like, you sound like you're from London. I'm from Bristol. And that's where I currently reside. And I, um, yeah, I've been working with educational institutions in this country for a couple of years, just helping them really connect with each other in the workplace in a more substantial and meaningful way. Um, and actually, in my day to day job, I support, mentor and coach 16 to 25 year olds, uh, helping them figure themselves out as they go through the academic world, mm -hmm. which is, yeah, it's a really fascinating, and rewarding role I get to play there. Uh, that's yeah. awesome. And you have a new a new project as well. Right, Daniel? Yeah. Yeah. I got a I got a seven and a half month old project. Um, who I don't I don't trip over when they stand up to stop them from trying to walk because it's too overwhelming. I don't do that. <laughs> My dad called me a project. Therapy bills. Therapy bills. No, no, no. I've got I've got a, I've got a little one um, who is just the the greatest thing um, I I could have possibly imagined, and really timely actually that you know you've invited us on to talk about love because uh it's really it's really real what they say you know you don't you do not know love uh like you do when you have a child it is something else something else my yeah. god well why don't you talk so, yeah. about that talk a little bit about what maybe what love was for you pre-child and what differences you see now okay so uh, I, I mean i think i think for one there wasn't there wasn't the the same urgency um i'd say i think i think my my experience of love heightened when i when i had my little one his name's ezekiel so i'll just i'll just call him that um and uh yeah it, it, there was a period of time actually let me go further further back there was a period of time where i saw love as the thing you just you did right and that was it purely like love is an action. And I think some of us are probably familiar with that already. It's something you do, you know, it's an act of love, it's a verb if you like. And so to me, it was very much this thing that you put into someone or into something, a labor of love, you know, the secret recipe is love. And so I went about my life, you know, perceiving it that way. Um, and then it was, it started off when I met my partner, you guys obviously know, know my partner and, was heightened when my little one arrived was the change in how I saw love and actually how I saw it as this this other level which to me actually was more a case of it's not just about the doing it's about the seeing and I realized this light bulb went on in my head I I want I want nothing but the the best obviously for my kid and I think you know I don't know any parent who doesn't 
but it was asking what what is the best for my kid you know it's not it's not going to be constantly buying them things necessarily it's not going to be giving them the things that i didn't have necessarily and uh, and it's not that this is the process i went through i just jumped to it it's going well what do they want how, how do they want to experience the world how do they want to experience themselves right and obviously as an infant that's going to be a really hard thing to to really get great you can't sit there while you're trying to change their nappy after they've done a number two being like so how do you want to experience this nappy change like tell me walk me through it you know that, that's let not let me happen. tell you i think he's got his notebook open <laughs> yeah <laughs> i credit a list for you dad <laughs> <laughs> but, but me and my partner me and my partner aligned really nicely on this this thing of our our kid technically already has a, a purpose they've already got this persona they've got this personality let's make space for our little one to discover that for themselves so let's build a safe environment let's build an open environment let's be as facilitating as possible to allow him to be as much himself as he wants to be right and that's when I realized that love is not just about an act of doing something for someone. To me, it's also the process of seeing someone for the way that they want to be seen, regardless of whether or not they see that as well. So we say, all say, just, say, say that again, say that again. I didn't quite understand. So, yeah. So for, for me, it wasn't it wasn't just about the act of love. It's about seeing someone in the way that they want to be seen, even if they're not aware of that themselves. Mm -hmm. okay. So okay. You, we have, we all have our blind okay. spots, right? Yeah. My part, my partner is an mm -hmm. absolute diamond at this. She's phenomenal at this. She is able to do things that she doesn't need to do it explicitly or, or, you know, overtly. She just does little things that are acts of love towards me that I mm. recognize mean something to me that I wasn't aware I, I was asking for or needed, but she just does it because she sees me in the blind spots that I don't see myself. And she lives into those spaces mm. actively. And to me, that is, it became like this thing of like, that's exactly for me, how I see love in a, in a greater way and what my young one helped me see he doesn't know himself in the, in that same way that you and I do and, and, and some of us do. But we see character behaviours in him. We see little things in him. We see what he enjoys. We see what he likes. We see what he doesn't like. We see environments he's not comfortable in. We see him trying things out. We see his curiosity. So let's let him be all of those things and try all of those things because he doesn't know that yet. But in that process, that is loving him. That's loving him, you know? Oh, and Lord. seeing seeing him beyond beyond him seeing himself and that that was just something for me that was like yeah absolutely absolutely and i think when we ask for someone to love us i don't know if we're aware that on some level we're asking people to do that we're asking people to see us for who we how, how we want to be seen even in our blind spots and perform the act of love in that direction absolutely full stop <laughs> <laughs> and that's a wrap and that's a wrap <laughs> well, I, I, a I, message I, from our sponsor right. Right. Yes. <laughs> well the interesting Lucky part terms. the interesting part about that is that and I think it's is that it took your partner and your son to show you things about love and I think that's mm. something that we're really seeing here on this in the, in the conversation is that there's things that we maybe even sense about love but we don't really get until it's yeah, other people show us about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Mr. Charles, you have, you're on the opposite end. You got older kids. Mm. <laughs> I, I was wondering what opposite am I on? Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm anti love. That's anti love. Yes. <laughs> so I hate love. <laughs> love is all fake news, man. It's all, fake it's news. all misinformation, man. It's all it's misinformation. True love. <laughs> Well, in Canada, everybody loves each other. <laughs> At least ninety-nine percent of us. I don't know. Anyway. Exactly. So, yeah. what say you? What what is what is love to you? I think you know, and I, yeah, I think you know. As I'm now, yes, I'm older. I've got older kids. I got an older family, 
And so my experience of love definitely uh, is not so much because of my family, whatever stage in my life is, but just like, um, it's, it's, I love what Daniel is saying is about where he's putting his attention on and putting his, you know, is pointing his actions and serving his child in, in a new way. And that could be totally an embodiment of love. And I love how he unpacked that. Where I'm, where my focus, and I've been where you are. When my daughter was born, my whole world changed. The moment I saw her for the very first time, my whole world experience changed. And what I would consider love, passion, and all those words associated with love completely transformed me in a flash, in a moment. Mm -hmm. It gave me access to a new sense of purpose and being a new sense of owning who I was going to be as a father, as a parent, as a man, all that transformed in a millisecond, the moment she was born. And I've never been the same since I've, I've just been more growing with her man, you know, growing. Okay. What else is this, you know, young person going to require of me as I, as she grows up. And then of course my son came into the world and everything like this. Um, but it also continues to transform for me, this experience of love. Because now they're older, they're adults now. They don't need as much of me as, as they did when they were infants. And, you know, so I'm looking, okay, what's, what's more to this thing, this experience of love? is much more bigger than, is much bigger than just my relationships. Hmm. It's how I walk, it has becoming more about how I show up in the world now too. Because if I could bring in, if I could be love and not just do love, and not just act out love, not just give love, but if I could present myself in a space of love, like a beingness, then what's available here? And what's showing up for me now, as I practice this way of being, I'm not as triggered by, sh by stuff anymore, not as much as I used to be. Watching the, some of the atrocities in the world and even stuff in my neighborhood, I'm not so triggered by those things anymore. Not that I don't care about them, not that I could just like, you know, turn my eye against them and stuff like that, is that I'm not coming in with the same level of maybe, you know, hot energy, as in you might say, like frustration, justice, hate, anger, rage, all that stuff doesn't serve me anymore. Right. And um, in this place, even the, somebody that I would probably see as an opposing force once before, whether they embody white supremacy or some kind of oppressive behavior, whatever like this, I can be with that. Because they're just, I could see their humanity in a different way. Not that I figured them out, but if I could just be in the presence of love with them, then I'm not, a, I'm not, their, I'm not their adversary. They're not mine, right? So I'm looking at other ways and other ways of being in a relationship with other people. If I was to bring in love there, what could happen? I don't have to, quote unquote, love that person. Mm -hmm. I don't have to give them a, an act of love. Like you were talking about, what does this person need from me? But if I could just bring that sense of being with me in these other relationships, what could transform? That's where my curiosity is going, right? That's where my, my exploration is going. It's like, where else can I bring this beingness of love in relationships that I probably wouldn't even never manifest into anything meaningful or deep or long lasting but just momentarily what would happen and what i'm finding in there is a lot more ease a little bit more grace even with myself i'm not as triggered by things right things don't upset me as they used to right and i could be in some really hard conversations because i know we're all trying to be better human beings we just don't know our ways yet and even the last year or so, when we talk about, man, I've been in these so many of these circles when we get into social justice, race issues, sex issues, gender issues, whatever like this, and you feel the energy of fragility even showing up and that animosity and anger, like I could, I'm learning to be with that in a different way. Again, not that I figured it out or mastered it, but by being okay in a sense of love, gratitude, appreciation that I'm actually a I have the privilege to be in the space. What can I create here? Not from a place of anger, but from a place of love. What can I create here? And that's given me just an access of a different perspective of life overall. Um, and I feel like in my last year or so more so, I'm feeling more grounded because I'm bringing this way of being more 
consciously everywhere. Um, that's where my that's where my exploration is going. That's where my curiosity is taking me now. So Charles, if I understand that you're you're asking yourself, what can I create here? You're 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 coming back like, who am I, and what do I want to bring to this particular situation? Yeah, yeah. To this person, to the circumstance, situation, environment. What can, if I was being love? What would change? How would I write, write the story where I'm what I'm experiencing right now? How could I be of service to this person or this environment or this situation? What could it draw? The, how could it draw the best of me if I was just to start from a place of love? Yeah. Yeah, I've been asking if I was if I was fully present to love, what what, what could I do right now, and yeah. what? if I wanted to experience more love, what could I do right now? Mm -hmm. Kind of like two different yeah. things to give me just ideas of what to do in a particular situation. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's bringing up for me is that love itself is, yeah, there's, there's like that. Okay. There's the act of love. There's the labor of love. Like Daniel was talking about, there's the interactions of love, but I'm looking at love as a way of being, not just something we do. Hmm. Right. Yeah, and I think the conversation around like what does love mean to each of us allows a little bit for that space to show up. Because mm -hmm. what I'm finding is that we all, we can pretty much guarantee that we have a different definition of what love is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost yeah. 100%. Like there's some people yeah. that overlap, but so far every person I've talked to has had a really interesting but mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. definition mm -hmm. of, of, of love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which one's your favorite so far? Who wins? <laughs> oh, this, it, it actually wasn't on the podcast. No, you'll love this. It wasn't on the podcast. It was actually at a dinner party. It was at a dinner party this weekend. And we're going yeah. around and at some point I bring up the conversation, well, what does love mean to you? And this guy said, spirals and gravity. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he explained, oh, you're going to invite me to more of these parties, Jerry. Yeah, and he said, <laughs> you no, know, it was so beautiful. He said, um, you said like, look in the universe, we're all held by gravity and we're basically spiraling around each other. If you look at universes and planets and yeah. people are spiraling around and yeah. love is that gravity that has us stay connected. And yes. sometimes it gets frayed and we spin apart and kind of spin out yes. of control. And other times it gets too close and it, we kind of end up colliding, but it's this whole mm. sense of, and we're always constantly spiraling. And I was like, oh man, that's beautiful. And that was just, that was over a glass yeah. of wine in between, you know, a, an amazing meal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I love that that's metaphor. Awesome. It, 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 I yeah. love that metaphor because it, it's, it kind of fits in what I was saying. It's the space between us. Mm. But when you're tuned, when you're not tuned into it, it's easy to be reactive. But when you're tuned into that space, mm. yeah, there's a lot of awesome things going to manifest out of that. Mm -hmm. We're not just running into each other, but actually we're actually kind of dancing with each other in a way. Yeah. And how are you guys helping yourself experience love? You got a lot going on. You're doing this stuff for other people. Uh, you know, Dan's got, you know, kid, Charles, you're starting new projects. What are you doing to help yourself experience that love? Cause I think we have to love ourselves first so that we can also share it with other people. That is such a timely question right now for me. Um, <laughs> there's a there's there's like there's so much more that I I don't want to talk about publicly that I'm experiencing the moment that has actually taken uh, that opportunity for me to really think about that for myself. Like away, it's been very uh, kind of two hundred miles an hour over here, so. I, I, I it, this is this. I don't know how how this is going to be received, actually. But for me, one thing I, I realized is I I love my escapism. I think for some reason, if I'm able to put myself in a position where I'm looking at reality third party, it becomes a hell of a lot easier for me to process everything going on. And it, it, it's a there's a it's. I don't want to call it disassociation so much because it's not like I completely dissociate from myself. I think what I do is I go, I'm, I'm not here for an, a period of time. I, I, I've checked out 
and I've gone, I've gone elsewhere. And it's not a meditation at all. It's just, I've disappeared. I'm not here. Um, and obviously, yeah, seven and a half month old is very hard to do that. And I don't, I don't take advantage of my privilege in being able to just check out um, too much because of course my partner is, is there 24 seven having to do it. So I don't want to, I don't want to take, take advantage of that. Um, but I think part of, part of me taking stock of love for myself is acknowledging how I think both significant and just insurmountably insignificant I am all at the same time which brings me to this really strange place of grounding myself actually um I do value of course I value myself massively and I love I love who I am and who I'm trying to be and who I'm trying to grow to be and so on um, but it's also making sure that that doesn't then take precedent over how I interact with people, uh, you know, putting my, put, making myself more important than the people around me. Um, and this, yeah, it, it's, it's a really, I, I, I've said it, I've said a lot and I feel like I've said a lot of nothing in a strange way, but <laughs> that that's genuinely how I try to take stock of love for me and um, also kind of get grounded in how I want to be able to provide love in the context that I, you know, that I discussed it earlier to others um, is to bring this, this dichotomy of significance and insignificance all to myself to kind of go, okay, cool. Let's go out into the world then. Let's, let's share space with others. I don't even know if that answers the question. <laughs> no, I, I think it's, I think it's a really powerful spot. It's, I am entirely significant and entirely insignificant all at the same time. It's, it's a hundred percent true. Mm. And, mm. and you have to relate to yourself that way. Like what I do matters, like what I do matters for mm. like, the people around me. And it really does. And yeah. it really doesn't in some, in some sort of way. Um, yeah. And, and to be able to embrace both those sides is great. It gives you some space and some freedom. You don't, I think, I don't think you That's can do it. it. I think you have to go back and forth. Like sometimes I'm going to take myself seriously and other times mm. I, I got to relax and, and you go back and forth. That allows for some movement, some play, some freedom. Mm -hmm. That's and, it. I think, yeah, I think when you put it like that, I think that's, that's something that's become obviously more prominent in becoming a parent. Um, you know, you, you, well, okay. I say you, pardon me. I certainly went into this with a, a, a very high standard of the relationship I wanted to have, you know, with my little one. And I think I held myself to such a standard that if I caught myself not doing it for all of five to 10 seconds, I was like, this is it. Your child's going to hate you. That's it. Therapy. <laughs> you know, done. Finished. Therapy. It's all over. There you go. Therapy. This is how it happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's ruined. Your child hates you. So, uh, so it's, it's being able, it, I think it's stuff like that. But of course, that self-critique that's already lived within me for, for so long. Um, I think this is why it's been important for me to, to separate myself a bit and give myself that that message of, you know, it matters, but it really, really doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. I actually had to remind myself of the episode where we talked about, um, I don't actually, it was an episode where we talked about um, parenting and how I think I said, if you are able to uphold your values uh, in parenting 33% of the time, that's that's a win. That's good. You know, <laughs> I have to try and tell myself that. <laughs> like, Keep that bar low, thing. buddy. Keep that bar low. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Literally. Um, but yeah, but of course, in 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 all of the, um, in all the time I spend, you know, investing in in him, it's yeah, it's it's wanting to have you actually have those spaces where I can really take stock and just go right. Hang on, let's just step away from this for a big moment and go is this like how is everything going is it really 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 that important is it really really that unimportant let's just weigh this out and give yourself some breathing room because yeah we're, we're world class at critiquing ourselves and that can really be our downfall mm -hmm. as well so yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah what about you charles what are you doing for yourself uh yeah i well, I'm not, I'm in, again, different stage of life as Daniel. I don't, I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. having to monitor my children 24 seven. Um, but, you know, we, we, between, but I've still got family to deal with. I've got different life challenges, right? And um, business and everything like that. I prioritize my care. I prioritize my self-care. 
is I realize that unless I take care of myself, I'm no good to anybody. That's it. Right? I can't expect the world to fulfill all of my needs. I've got to fulfill my needs. Right? I've got to love myself. I've got to nurture myself. I've got to restore myself. I've got to build my own inner resilience to things. I can't expect my partner to do that for me. I can't expect my kids to do that. My, my clients definitely won't do that for me. But for me to be my best self in all aspects of my life, I have to pay attention to who I'm being. I have to take care of myself. I have to feed myself. I have to balance myself out. I have to do what interests me, feed my passions and whatnot. And that's not selfish, right? I don't look at it as being selfish anymore. I look at it, okay, if I'm going to show up consistently at my best self for the rest of the world, I have to take care of me, right? I have to love myself. I have to create, be that space that we're talking about with love. I have to create that for me. Right. Um, or else how am I going to actually manifest that out anywhere else? I won't be able to. Right. So my perspective right now is that it's not that my love for myself is more important than the, the love I give to my, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying in order for me to love my family, I need to love myself. Right. One fuels the other and vice versa. Right. So yeah so yeah i do i do take care of my health i do take care of my sleep i meditate um i journal i get hooked on a netflix series every once in a while or you know what i mean mm -hmm. so um whatever it does just to create peace of mind for me i do that because that's me taking care of my that's take me taking care of me that's awesome i i love i love your uh your sense of all the your sense of style and how well you do you, the creativity you bring to everything and that, mm -hmm. that just that extra, like your, just everything that you put out there is such a, it's such dumb, such a such sense of class. It's so, mm -hmm. it's so impressive. Yeah, I, I just, you. and, and I just love that you, you continue to honor those, that, that little thing, like, you know, just making your thing look good mm -hmm. is, is something I've learned from you on that. So thank mm -hmm. you for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Fellas, we could talk. I, I realized that we could we could have this conversation. We actually we could probably start a whole program called called the Purpose Roundtable based off of these con these conversations, right? <laughs> we could. That's a great idea, that's Joey. Great idea. We didn't think that's of that. Really good. Yeah. No, when did we think of that before? That's a really good idea. This but guy. I, I, I do want to say. Always like, thinking. Yeah. <laughs> well, when we did start the Purpose Roundtable, and we were talking race, racism, sexism, and you know, we were just we were diving deep into stuff. It was a really fun mm. conversation. Like three three guys having these yeah. conversations different countries different backgrounds and mm -hmm. I, I think that was good and I, I think the same thing could be applied to love like if more if more people and more guys talked about what love means to them not trying to prove what love is but really just exploring what it means to us personally i think that would be a good thing 100 mm. percent that's it but we're going to wrap it up here so we can uh uh basically help out all the listeners we always end with three questions the first question is, is what is a favorite book, movie, song that inspires love or romance for you? Okay, I'm, I'm going to take it away um, because I'm far more comfortable answering this question than someone else's. So <laughs> <laughs> hey, he just, he's, he's, he's doing song. I could probably find a song. No worries. <laughs> oh, I love it. So um, the first thing that jumped in my head was Moulin Rouge straight away. And I know that's, there's two actually, so I'm going to cheat. Moulin Rouge and then Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Um, they both, they both got to me. I think for one, they both, I both saw them at very poignant times in my life. Moulin Rouge, um, the poignancy was that um, I was Dan. I was being Dan at the time. Um, but Eternal Sunshine, I had actually gone through a really difficult breakup. So I think that, that <laughs> spoke to me in a way I wasn't ready for it to speak to me. And I still watch it um you know more recently and it still lands and for one Moulin Rouge interestingly you know I, I thought about it and of course what you said earlier Joey about the spiraling and the, the gravity pulling it all together and stuff like that and I was like well like, it's it's a musical for one so it's a fan to me it's a fantastic you know musical great songs really well well put together um and it's always the gut punch um where the, I think it's the fragility of love that ultimately comes out of that film that um, that I think is is so powerful. 
um, the, the hard work that goes into it and, you know, the, the extravagance of it. And I think that's what it is about the film. It's so, it's so big, it's so loud, it's so large and colourful. And, it, you know, it represents all of those wonderful feelings in a film of what love to me feels like. But at the same time, it's the, it's the, this, the fragility, the total ease at which you can just boom, and how deeply that cuts. I really love that film. But, but <laughs> I, I, honestly, I love it. And it really, it really gets, it, it, there is not a time I can watch it. The beautiful thing is when I met, when I met my partner, um, she, she still is like really, really strong, strong, powerful, powerful woman. Um, really, really holds her own insanely well. Um, and so when we, when we were dating, uh, yeah, she she did play that role really nicely, you know. And I was like, oh, let's watch let's watch a film, let's watch a film together. And we watched Moulin Rouge, and it broke her. And she she hated me because she was like, you're not you're not supposed to see me cry at this stage in our relationship. This isn't okay. But it actually opened up the doors to the vulnerability and the compassion that she always had. I hadn't seen it before, and I didn't think she was cold hearted. I was just like, I didn't realize you cared this much. This is amazing. Cold heart. <laughs> I, didn't think, I didn't think she was just like, you know, <laughs> Cruella de Vil. I, 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 I hadn't seen that side of her. So yeah, so the gut punch in that film gut punched her. And it, it, I think it gave her permission to be vulnerable in front of me. And, and then we, we entered a new level of our relationship. And that's what that film did um, for us. And then Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is, again, you could almost see it as like, <laughs> A very strange sequel, not really, but the loss, the loss of love, mm -hmm. how much it means to us, how, mm -hmm. again, how mm -hmm. desperately we hold on to that sensation, that feeling, that, um, that experience, no matter whether it was even good for us or not, or what, mm -hmm. what, you know, what we thought was good for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's always, that's always so, so hard because of course, throughout the film, spoiler alert, but I mean, you should have watched it already, listener. What are you doing? Homework, get on, go and watch it. Get on with it. <laughs> Come on, like, really, go, watch go, it. Let's go. It's out there. Let's go, Netflix. let's go. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, is that as it, it's, as the, the memory of his old, his old partner fades, his, his, his desire to still feel it actually grows so it's not, it, it's clear that, well, and again, this is my interpretation. It's so clear that he's not chasing her. He's chasing the feeling of love that he got with her, right? And, and of course, it, it's, it gets so, so incredibly desperate, so deep, so dark, it cuts hard and, and, and deep. And, and again, I think that's why it was a, a really, really powerful film for me at the time, because that's actually exactly what I was going through at that time when I watched it. Um, and it was really hard to watch because, yeah, it was like, I know that eventually I'm going to lose sight of what this person looked like to me, who this person, not who this person was, but yeah, what they looked like to me and, and all this stuff. I'm actually losing how I felt with them at the time. And that was great. And that's what hurts. Mm -hmm. um, and again, yeah, no, another reflection, I think, of, of the, the, the power that love can give us. And, and again, how... how um, how fragile it is. Mm -hmm. So those are the, those that I cheated, those two. Go and watch them, put them on your list. Do it now. Turn this off, go and watch the films. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You, thank me later. <laughs> Charles, you? Well, I was going through the list of Marvel Universe movies. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay, what was the last one I watched? It was Black Widow. No, that was not much a lot of love in that one, no. But as you were sharing Eternal Sunshine, my first thought was Lost in Translation. Oh, yeah. Right? Which was a fantastic movie. I don't know, that's got to be about 20 years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, and what, was, what came alive for me in that movie is that love is aliveness. We get so lost in the details and the minutia and the status quo and all the nonsense in our life of what success looks like, of what fulfill, of what you know, you know, um, achievement is, and all these other things, um, that we lose sight of what is it is to be alive. And you see these two characters circling around each other, 
yes, there was an attraction in there, but what they were really longing for was an aliveness in their, in their world. What they really wanted to was reconnect with what really inspired and moved them and, and um, where they found joy and meaning and purpose. And they saw, and each other saw that in the other and was able to co-create that in a moment. Um, and that's what I, you know, that's what I learned from that movie there was that, you know, love for me is, is aliveness. It's how, it's, is what fuels you, what drives you, motivates you, is what inspires you. And if you can share that with someone, bonus, mm. right? So, yeah. I just watched uh, 100. Next came up with something, Mr. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, did have 40, you did have 45 minutes while Dan went on his. his, his yeah, no, blah, blah, oh, blah. More, more is, room, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Dan <laughs> likes musicals. Blah, blah, blah. I tap dance in the shower at night, but my kid ain't watching. <laughs> Uh, and for and for all the listeners, this is a long time, uh, a, a long time joke. These are, these are you know, um, I just watched a, a hundred steps. It says, <laughs> these guys are. <laughs> is this how your show always ends? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, we're going <laughs> to. So here's the, the second question that I end with. It's, well, there's two more. <laughs> there's two more, there's two more. Oh, the, second, okay. the second question that I end with is what, um, who is it that if you could have a conversation with and talk to them about what love means to them, who would you like to talk to? Bob Marley. Oh, my son came home. He's like, dad, we're studying Bob Marley in school. Do you know about Bob Marley? He was so excited. <laughs> it was amazing. Why, why Charles? Why Bob Marley? I don't know. There's, there's just, there's just a way he embodies that love for humanity and self and spirit and wholeness. It's rare to see that in a human being. It's rare to see that in an artist, right? To see that just genuine love for people. And I think he embodied that personally. I think he embodied that in his music and his craft. And um, it would, it's so sad that he left us so early. Um, but, um, it, the music that he's left there for, for me has left an impression that I, yeah, I, that will never shake. And, um, yeah, it's just everything about him. Yeah. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Mr. Dan. That's, I don't know. There's no direct answer, but is there ever a direct answer with me? So I, I am going to say, I'm actually going to say, because I've not really given myself enough time to think about this. Um, I'm going to say that guy you had dinner with, Joey. Oh. I want to I hear did. more from, from that perspective. Okay. Yeah. I will get, I will get him that, on. That was really, that was genuinely really powerful. I actually really, yeah. really enjoyed that. I'm like, yeah, say more. Give me more yeah. of that. Um, yeah. That, that genuinely is my answer. I'm going to leave okay. it there because... We all awesome. got time we need to spend. I love it. I love it. You know, <laughs> I think one thing that really um he's he's also he's a fashion photographer. And I think mm. one thing that it maybe speaks to is the fact that he told a vi it's a visual story. Right. He described mm. love in something that we yeah. can all see. And that was really powerful in terms of the storytelling. I think that was mm. um, I know it was for me. Nice. So awesome. And uh, so before we get to the last question, how can folks get in touch with you, work with you, all that kind of stuff? Or can they? So, I mean, you can, you can email me easily at daniel.holly at hotmail.co.uk. That's, that's, that's literally the email address I use. It's not anything fancy. I don't have my own daniel.holly at immersive social cohesion experience hyphen get your life <laughs> None of that. <laughs> yeah, that's a self promo right there. <laughs> no, nah, man, using... you, you, you just I'm me, man. Every but, time, every. But you're also, every Dan, place. you're also, you're so, also big on TikTok and Instagram, correct? I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, yeah. I'm, I, I don't know if big on big on tick. I don't know what big on TikTok is. I got I got seventy seventy k followers, so that feels nice. So on TikTok, I'm at the only other Dan. You can follow me over there for sure. Instagram, um, I'm at. Big Daddy Dan H, and it's different, different handle only because I started getting a little bit of heat from TikTok trolls. So I was like, oh no, I'm gonna have to change my handle over to Instagram. Um, but I'm primarily on TikTok. So if you want to follow me there, by all means do. Um, Instagram, you'll get maybe a post a week. <laughs> <laughs> and the baby pictures. 
Yeah, I know. I don't even post baby pic. You ain't gonna see my kid up there, man. Don't post pictures of my kid. So you ain't gonna see him either. <laughs> His mom has something to say about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how you get in touch with me. Uh, yeah, awesome. you can find me on SwiftSync.com. Straight up, easy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we'll have yeah. all these in the in the links in the yeah. in the bio and stuff. And yeah. Charles, who are you working with these days? Who's your main client? Oh, wait. Oh, no. Clients um, are executives now. I work with some individuals. I work with some uh, young men and women and emerging, particularly emerging black leaders, men and women who are sort of finding way up in the corporate world. Um, like I said, too, earlier, I think was um, I've launched a group for men of color recently. Um, so working with men of a variety of ages and lived experiences and whatnot, um, creating a space for them to uh, heal, grow and evolve together. That's awesome. That's dope, man. That's awesome. So my last question is, is because I always want people thinking about and exploring the idea of what love means to them and learning from that. And I'm curious, what did you guys get out of this conversation? You know, it's, it's, it's not something I, I pay as much attention to as I used to, but I, I think it's really valuable mm -hmm. that three kind of male presenting people are here, like just talking about this. Um, I, 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 and I think this is only a reflection of how I'm experiencing you know, my space uh, at the moment. Um, and there's certainly in, in kind of the space I work in day to day, there's a lot of I think there's a lot of misguided masculinity that I've been put in front of that is still very much wanting to not be vulnerable or, you know, afraid to be vulnerable or pushed into not, not being allowed to be vulnerable. Um, and it is, it, it has been sad because you, you experience the, mental health challenges that come with that, the, the, the restrictions they impose upon themselves because of what they've learned about what they feel they're supposed to be and what they're socialized to be. And of course, the representation then of um, maleness, masculinity to femininity and women as well, and, and then how it presents itself. So actually, I just really enjoyed having this conversation with you guys. I've really missed you guys, like with the, with these, those candid open conversations, knowing that we can be vulnerable with each other and, and obviously remembering that, yeah, it ain't all like that. Obviously when you do a day to day job and you experience the same thing over and over again, sometimes you can get lost in the source and you, 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 know, you kind of, what's the word I'm, I make it globalize this, this, this microcosm you've got here. Um, so actually it's been really, really great being able to just, talk to two other people um and just go you know what yeah hey guess what we can talk about love i mean obviously we might not be able to talk about love in film movies and books because some of us have our challenges in that <laughs> but you know, we're working through it everyone's on a different journey and <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> But no, no, seriously, no, that's what I've got, man. And it's, it's dope. I think, I think stuff like this is really, it's really um, empowering, liberating uh, and fulfilling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one, th one thing I take away from, actually I take two things away from it. One, how many words Daniel uses. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think the oxygen of all of Canada just went down a notch. <laughs> Give it to me. Yes. No, but I also I also want to acknowledge, you know, what I, what I've observed in this conversation is like how, you know, yes, we talk about different meanings of love and what it can mean for different people and whatnot, but just even even being in different stages of life can give you a different perspective of what love is. You know, especially when it comes to parental love love of being a father and all that stuff is quite cool yeah yeah i'm taking away some just a reminder to reach out to good friends 
you know, we get so wrapped up. Like, you know, I, I love this conversation. I, I just remember all the conversations we had and it just making me think of like, Oh, who else could I reach out to and, yes. and have this conversation and have these conversations with it's, um, mm -hmm. I, I think it's really, it's, it's been great. So I, I just want to thank you guys. This is, this yeah, has been fun. Um, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely have to do it again. And, and, and to all the listeners who are like, what are these guys doing? This is literally just like three guys that haven't talked together in a long time. Yeah, and having fun. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. So uh, any last words before we wrap up? No, I well, thank you, you for doing this. So. Thank you for doing this. Miss you guys. Yeah, thank you. So everyone, please think about what love means to you. Talk to your people because the more that we can all talk about what love means to us, I say the greater chance that we have of actually having love in our lives and having great friendships, being great parents and whatever way that love shows up. So thank you. We'll see you next time on the Love Launch Podcast. You have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later. Bye, everybody. Bye. Peace.